Hello, this is the third part of the chapter 16 of the Crystal Clear Electronics video series. We continue with Subwatch Pyre, let's see what the timer peripheral is for. Hello! A microcontroller is much more than a processor in that, in addition to the operation executing core, it includes additional circuits called peripherals to facilitate communication with the environment. The main function of the timer or counter peripheral is to count the edges of square waves. These are usually the edges of an internal clock signal, which arrive at a fixed rate, so they are a good indication of the elapsed time, hence the term time. However, the peripheral can also count the edges of external square waves, for example, the rotation of the axis of a washing machine or an internal combustion engine, which arrive not necessarily at a fixed rate, therefore the name counter. The burden of measuring time is lifted from the main function's shoulder by the timer, so the software developer has less work to do, and yet they have a more reliable time source. While the core of the microcontroller deals with the execution of instructions, the timer continuously increases the value of a counter in the background. With the help of the timer, we can, among other things, simply ask how much time has elapsed since the start of our microcontroller, which is called uptime, or measure delays of milliseconds or microseconds, or execute certain tasks periodically, for example, to read analog signals a thousand times a second or to turn the heater on or off once per hour. This peripheral is also capable of generating PWM signals, which we will discuss in the next chapter. But how does the timer work? There are three timer peripherals in our microcontroller. These are used with the suffixes 0, 1, and two. Of these, timer counter 0 is the simplest, which has an 8-bit wide counter and is capable of generating a PWM signal. Timer counter 1 is 16-bit wide and is capable of generating two PWM signals in parallel by recording the time of an external event. Timer counter 2 is only 8-bit wide, but it has its own oscillator, so it can count at a frequency independent of the system clock. In section 14.2 of the datasheet, you can see the structure of timer counter 0 peripheral, and the following figure shows us the parts that are relevant for us. The TCNT register is a counter, controlled by the timer control logic, according to the settings in the TCCRN register. Here, n is the number of the counter, that is, in case of timer counter 0, the corresponding registers are TCNT0, TCCR0, and so on. These settings, in case of timer 0, affect the following. Whether the source of the input signal should be an external signal or an internal clock through the so-called prescaler. These are the CS0 bits. Whether the maximum value of the counter is FF or the value of the OCR0 register. These are the WGM0 bits. Other settings related to PWM signal generation. These are the COM0 bits. The frequency of counting is determined by the settings of the clock source and the prescaler. Let's take a closer look at what a prescaler is. If the microcontroller uses a 16 MHz clock for the maximum performance, and if the counter value is increased by 1 for each rising edge of the clock, then the 8-bit counter reaches its maximum value of 255 in 16 microseconds. Although it is possible to measure longer times with such a fast counter, a slower counter is often more practical. This is solved by the prescaler, which divides the frequency of the clock source at its input by an integer, for example, dividing the frequency of the 16 MHz clock by 8, so its output will be a 2 MHz clock. This is also required to generate hardware PWM signals of longer periods that would not be possible without a prescaler with an 8-bit counter and a fast clock. We will use the prescaler in our example program.
Let's take a look at the configuration options of the timer peripherals. One of the two most important configuration options defines the mode of operation of the counter. This is the mode of operation. In normal mode, the counter starts from zero and the counter value is increased by one until it reaches the maximum value of its data type. It is 255 for an 8-bit counter, 65,535 for a 16-bit counter. Then, the counter overflows and continues counting from zero. This overflow event is indicated by the TOV bit, which stands for the term Timer Overflow. We can select this mode for Timer Counter by setting the WGM1 and 0 bits of the TCCR register to 0. We can see it in Table 14.2 of the datasheet. In the Clear Timer on Compare Match mode, the counter starts from zero and is also increased one by one. As soon as the counter value is greater than the number set in the OCR register, the counter is reset and resumes counting from zero. At the same time, the OCF, the output compare flag bit, is set to one until it is reset to zero by our program. It is illustrated in figure 1411 in the datasheet. Another important setting is the clock source, which can be selected using the CS2, 1 and 0 bits of the TCCR register, shown in Table 14.6 in the datasheet. We have the opportunity of stopping the timer using the main clock of the microcontroller, counting the prescaled version of the main clock or the signal on the T0 pin. The external clock signal arriving at the T pin can be used to count impulses from outside the microcontroller. For example, an output signal of a sensor that is on the wheel of a car near to a cogwheel. The output of such a sensor is a digital signal, that is, it can take two values. In its initial state, it usually indicates a high value, that is, a voltage close to the supply voltage, and it indicates a low value if it is close to a cog. The microcontroller detects how many edge changes happen in a unit of time, and from this, the rotating speed of the wheel can be calculated. Let's see what options we have if we want to time something precisely. Chapter 8 of the datasheet describes what kind of clock sources can be used with this microcontroller. These are summarized in the table. Browsing the table, you can see how cheap alternatives exist for applications depending on the clock source. I don't understand why, if you can get an external RC oscillator for 2.10 cents, why don't we always use such cheap solutions? The main reason for this is that we have to consider not only the material cost of the part but also the production cost. So we will have more components on the circuit, which will take longer to assemble, and the design of the extra components will require more engineering work, which also has a cost. If you also take into account that you are not just developing this for your own home and making one piece, but that is a massive produced circuit, of which tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands or even a million pieces will be made, then the cost of just a few cents can make a big difference to the overall project. For this reason, external oscillators are used only when necessary. That's precisely the case. Thank you, Adam. Also, the time of the design engineers is an additional important aspect of the planning time. In terms of both price and simplicity, the microcontroller's internal RC oscillator wins, but its orders of magnitude are less accurate than an external crystal. If we need accurate and fast timing, an external crystal is usually the best solution. An external clock setting is required when there are multiple microcontrollers in a circuit and they need to operate at exactly the same frequency. How accurate should our clock be? Clock precision is measured by how much the clock is allowed to deviate in a given time frame. 
For example, a 10 MHz oscillator with a frequency tolerance of plus or minus 0.5% delivers between 9,950,000 and 10,050,000 pulses in one second. For more accurate devices, tolerance is given in ppm, an abbreviation that comes from part per million. I expect my watch not to slip more than half a minute in a month. This means one second a day. This is rounded down to 11 ppm. It is impossible to make an RC oscillator with such precision, and it would be difficult to find such a ceramic oscillator if there is even any. In fact, with this 11 ppm, we have set the bar high enough. When writing this chapter of the curriculum, the most accurate quartz that's easily available offers 10 ppm. Only 1% accuracy is guaranteed for the calibrated internal oscillator, which could cause a delay of a quarter of an hour per day. That wouldn't be very practical. So, we need to have a quartz in the clock to be sufficiently accurate. It is no coincidence that the term quartz watch is used. Even so, we have two options. The quartz can be used either as the main clock of the microcontroller or only for the input of the timer slash counter to external clock. The advantage of the former solution is that the power consumption is lower if a slow crystal is used as the main clock instead of the minimum 1 MHz RC oscillator. The advantage of the second solution is that the higher operating frequency allows more operations per unit time, for example more complex display management and we don't need to worry about fuse settings. I chose the second solution for the example program, so we will use the timer slash counter to peripheral. It was the third video of chapter 16 of the Crystal Clear Electronics curriculum. Join us for the final part of the accurate timing timers chapter. Bye! Bye!